All right. If you want to, uh, join us. The words will be up on the board. Chris has got the music ready, and here we go.
getting ready for um, the contemplative time of our, our service right now. Um, as we prayer priest and pray. And he speaks those words. Um, so as we prepare for our invocation of for the reading, please silence your cell phones. Um, and we're going to allow the music to take us into that quiet time. Please recognize the truth that there is only one. That power, that presence, that life, that life, that love. And it is a present right here, right now, in through and as each and every one of us, in through and as each and every thought and idea. It is the power and presence of love. It is the beauty of the world we see around us in the faces we see, in the nature we see. Or experience, not just see, but how do we experience the world? For in that oneness is deep blessing, deep reminder of the truth of our very being that we are the blessing, we are the beauty, we are the life, we are the love. And so I simply take a moment and am so grateful for this remembering, this embodying. And I know that everything that moves forward into this day, into this week, 
we are grounded in that knowingness that God is, I am. And we become the blessings for that is the truth of our very being and our very presence blesses the world in which we live and blesses each and every person we come in contact with. And in that light, the world that we choose to live in becomes made manifest. And so I simply breathe in that knowing, breathe in that truth, breathe in the blessing, and call it good and very good. And I simply let it be, knowing it already is. And together we say, and so, so it is. is. Ernest Holmes was quoted in last month's issue of Science of Mind magazine as saying, gratitude is one of the chief graces of human existence. In the past decade or two, I've been gradually evolving related to gratitude and the concept of blessing others. In 2006, I began a year-long gratitude practice. I call my gratitude board. Initially, they were simple, and gradually they became more like a jigsaw puzzle. This practice brings me pleasure and improves my attitude. Each January, I have a clean, blank canvas situated where I can see it each morning. Perhaps one or more of you might like to adapt this practice. Darn simple. Wait till you see the others. Thank you. This was last year. And um, Reverend Kathy Hearn, yeah, I did have to expand on to page two. <laughs> <laughs> um, Reverend Kathy Hearn was here for the co creation process. And then, of course, we welcomed Reverend Laura for her interview on Labor Day weekend. But I chose, and I chose to add and add and add my grand dog, the whole, the whole shebang. <laughs> and so each year I begin with a blank. And this will be the remainder of this year. The highlights this year are three brand new children added to my family which hadn't happened for 20 years. So that's great fun, and they get to be the highlight this year. <coughs> a lot of things are included, like uh, symbols of the power of eight and our contemplative meditation. And so that has encouraged me each morning when I awake and I see and the blank portion that remains for this year. Last week, Joe quoted Esther Hicks saying, find little things to be thankful for, therefore my jigsaw puzzle. In 2011, I wrote an essay, which I'll read for you today. My Chicago sister said it sounded similar to articles in a magazine she had subscribed to called Science of Mind. <laughs> One aspect of my essay contains the concept of blessing strangers while I'm driving. Exploring connections. After connecting with my spirit, I've acquired an intuitive knowing of oneness with women in the world, a sort of sisterhood. She may be my neighbor or an Afghan woman on the news. 
This attitude of connection broadens from my sisters in the world to men and children, the huge sky, bodies of water, plants, animals, rocks, and sand. Subtle changes are occurring in my choices. I'm sponsoring a child in Kenya who has a uniform now and schooling. Ahmed and his mother Hawa write lovely letters to me. They are not entities, but have names. I've put a contemplative garden in place of an old deck in my small backyard. I participate in a group that studies our connection with the earth and the universe. I've picked up on a friend's suggestion that I, when stopped at a traffic light, choose a pedestrian or person in another vehicle and send positive vibes and blessings for his or her sake. This does wonders for my patients in traffic and may do wonders for one person in the world. Thus, I'm simultaneously taking better care of myself and another. On a Four Corners trip this summer, I realized more clearly how evolving communication is such a marvel. Pictographs and petroglyphs in the 13th century provided messaging in Canyon de Chelly and Mesa Verde areas. Fundamental in humanity, maybe not in plants and rocks, is awareness of our own thoughts. Storytelling, sharing our thoughts and memories came down through generations. We now connect not only through spoken, printed, and electronic word, but also our own positive thoughts. Whether for personal or worldwide change, I'm grateful that more of my sisters and brothers are standing up for themselves, allowing others to take responsibility for their actions and speaking up for the good of all. Recently, I've studied Lynn McTaggart's The Field and Judy Canato's Field of, of Compassion. These female authors believe consciousness and the human spirit can create positive change. Perhaps with baby steps, or giant steps, we may, as a human race, reach the proverbial <coughs> tipping point and transform not only our individual selves, but also the entire globe for the better. What may be possible with greater awareness of our connectedness? In 2019, practicing the concept of love thy neighbor I have found is easier with other drivers and hospice patients I visit than with some relatives and nearby neighbors. Mm -hmm. This has become clear to me with my complaint free challenge, which I'm coming up on day, since I'm coming up on day 13 for a third time. <laughs> <laughs> this month's CSL topic of blessing others where they are seems to be just what I'm looking for. Love is the answer to any block I'm experiencing. If I feel stuck in any relationship, whether I choose to stay in that relationship or not, I can send love in a sincere blessing. So I look forward to Reverend Laura's talk today and to reading more of The Gentle Art of Blessing, where on page 79, the author writes, the more we learn to bless unconditionally, the less we judge. It is an amazing inner experience. We simply let others be. Let us learn to see in our neighbor the light. Thank you, Barb, and thank you, Kelly. So we are talking about gratitude this month. And um, as uh, Barb said, Joe mentioned it, was speaking about it last week. And um, in addition to doing that, we're also looking at honoring all nations and all peoples. And so as I was putting those things together, I started thinking about the words that we use. Are our words a blessing to the people that we greet, or are they something other than that? Barb mentioned we've been doing this uh, no complaining challenge. Uh, I think we're about day 80, 85 of it right now, something like that. I can't remember. I finished it on day 69. I got through the 21 days, and I stopped counting after that. But um, as we're looking at that, are the words that we're using complaining about someone, criticizing someone, 
or are they blessing? They can be either way. They can be either way. And if, our, if we're using blessings, then there can't help but be a great deal of gratitude involved in it. So I, I was, um, many of you know I'm a big Facebook person. I came across this meme on Facebook this week. It says, um, you can't read it, if the, if the words you spoke appeared on your skin, would you still be beautiful? If the words you spoke appeared on your skin, would you still be beautiful? What are the words that we're using? You know, right now in our country, we are going through a terribly turbulent time. And a great deal of it has to do with the words that are being spoken. The words that are being spoken by people in power. Coinciding with everything else, this at the end of last week and the beginning of this week, two um, letters arrived to me from different um, spiritual sources. One came from our own CSL spiritual leader, Dr. Ken Gordon, and the Socially Motivated Spiritual Engagement, spirit, no, sorry, Spiritually Motivated Social Engagement Committee, which um, is partially responsible for the themes that we have each year. And um, I've printed copies of it on the back for you. But um, it starts off with uh, Dr. Petra Weldes, who is the chair of the committee, and she's a senior minister in Dallas. She's been a minister for over 30 years now in CSL. And she starts off talking, you know, telling the story about being bullied as a child and her mother telling her sticks and stones will break your bones, but names will never hurt you. And I couldn't help but remember how it was for me as a child. Um, taking that very adage and trying to apply it to hurtful situations. Being an overweight child all of my life, I have been called every single possible name that you could associate with being fat. And it hurt. It hurt as a child. As an adult, you know, I don't, it doesn't bother me so much anymore because I kind of, kind of consider the person that's doing it. You know, and, you know, that's just, that just doesn't bug me anymore. But I tell you, as a child, it didn't help. It didn't help to have that sticks and stones will break your bones, but names will never hurt you. And then when we now have people in power using those very same words, and I can't help but think that those um, three incidences that have happened in the last two weeks were, I figured it out, um, 34 people killed and 67 people wounded in, in, in four days in the United States. Do you know that there are six countries that have travel advisories advising their people not to come to the United States? Uruguay, where there's civil unrest most of the time advises their people not to come to the United States because it's too dangerous. What are the words we're saying? The second letter I got this um, past week, well, about 10 days ago I got it, is from the National Cathedral. If you're not aware what the National Cathedral is, it is, it is a non-denominational national house of prayer that is staffed by the uh, Episcopal, uh, Episcopalian um, diocese um, staff it. But it is our national place of prayer. The title of this, Have We No Decency? A Response to President Trump. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but it, it asks the question, when will America have had enough? They quote um, a U.S. attorney back in 1954 who was talking to Joseph McCarthy. And if you're not familiar, Joseph McCarthy led a big um, witch hunt for communist people in the United States. And he targeted anyone and he said whatever he wanted to say. And this is what um, Joseph Welch, the attorney says, until this moment, Senator, I have never really gauged your cruelty or your rec recklessness. You have done enough. Have you no decency? That stopped Joseph McCarthy and his top. That put an end to his tyranny of persecution for anyone who didn't agree with him, anyone who spoke out against him. And so they, they ask the question, when will, we, when will we have had enough? And where is our sense of decency? They further go on to say, make no mistake about it, Mr. Trump, words matter. They are a clarion call, and they give cover to white supremacists who consider people of color subhuman infestation in America. This is from our national cathedral, our national house of prayer. And then they ask the question, when does silence become complicity? 
those of us who are remaining silent about these words that are being spoken. To stay silent in the face of such rhetoric for us is to tacitly condone the violence of these words. When will we have had enough? I've copied both letters that are on the table in the back for you if you'd like to take one when you leave, if you're interested in reading. But these are, these are the words of our spiritual leaders here in Centers for Spiritual Living. These are the words of our national spiritual leaders. About three weeks ago, a great deal of, of um, ministers in our movement went down to um, El Paso to meet with another group. There was about 600 ministers all together talking about the words that we're using, the things that we're calling these people that are trying to seek refuge in the United States. People of faith are coming together and saying enough is enough. Are our words a blessing or are our words a, a curse? We have an opportunity each and every moment to make a difference. And when I was thinking about the blessing thing, what came to me was, um, of course, the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes from Jesus. They're uh, written in the book of Matthew and a few of them in the book of Luke, although they're phrased differently. Oh, wrong book. So um, our book of the month, is, as uh, Barb mentioned, is The Gentle Art of Blessing. He just came out with a new book at the end of June, which is 365 Blessings. Same uh, author, Pierre Pr uh, Pradaban. Um, I can't speak enough for this work. When I was reading it, uh, getting ready for this month, and I was writing the newsletter, I just, just had this thought. It's like, this stuff is gratitude and forgiveness on steroids. This is taking gratitude and putting it into action. What Marina said in our book study the other day. Gratitude in action. This is forgiveness in action. This is taking it. You know, I can sit and I can forgive somebody that has harmed me in some way. But then are my thoughts also condemning them? Like, I forgive you. Like, I'm over this. I'm bigger than this. I can forgive you. But then what am I thinking about that person later on? Am I blessing them or am I condemn condemning them? So, um, anyway, back to the Beatitudes. Um, Pierre Pradevon rewrote them, which I thought was pretty cool. It's, it's not really rewritten. It's just put in more modern language. So he says, Blessed am I when I am without guile, for it will access the inner kingdom of heaven within me. Blessed am I when I mourn, for you will comfort me, infinite love. Blessed am I in my choice to express meekness, for it is the a portal to inheriting immense good. Blessed am I when I hunger and thirst for righteousness and justice, for much good will come to me. Blessed am I when I express mercy and compassion, for they will return to bless me. Blessed am I when my heart is pure, for it enables me to see the divine everywhere. Blessed am I when I make peace, for it awakens the divine within me. Blessed am I when I am persecuted for pursuing the path of integrity, for it will lead me to the kingdom of heaven. And finally, blessed am I when men revile, persecute, or slander me for pursuing what is right, for I shall be rewarded with an abundance of good. Sometimes it's easy to bless ourselves. Yeah, we'll get some batteries out the door for you. Thank you. Um, sorry about that. It's not you this time. It's not you this time. It's the batteries. I just put these in, too. Um, so, it's easy sometimes to bless myself. And then sometimes it's really not. Sometimes it's easier to look outside of myself and bless others. Okay, now I'm green. <laughs> um, you know, 
know, is and so there's this idea that I've been working with lately, uh, brought to me by my dear friend Colleen, about the idea of translational spirituality versus transformational spirituality. So translational spirituality is taking a spiritual idea and thinking, how does it apply in my life? And how does this apply to me? So I can look at all of our spiritual ideas, our principles that we have, that we believe in here, and I can say, how does that work in my life? And honestly, that's the first place where it has to start, because it has to start within me. Transformational spirituality is how do I look at those principles and change conditions? How do I change the conditions in my life? And how do I change the conditions of things around me? This gentle art of blessing feels to me like it is transformational spirituality. As Barb said, she was started blessing people on the road. So I was leaving Friday to go to a um, fabulous trip with my dear friend Fran here um, up to Northern California last week. And so as I'm driving along on the road, you know, I'm just, I, I'm just driving, you know, down the highway, down the I-15 to, to Vegas to pick her up. And um, I see a, an RV that's got a whole slew of recreational, you know, mm -hmm. four-wheelers and toys, all kinds of toys in the back of it. And so I said to myself, may you have grand and wondrous adventures, and may everything be safe and secure. You know, I saw a homeless man who was talking to himself on the street. I said, may you have clarity and safety today. Because he seemed to be very confused to me. And I thought, well, what can I bless him with? I blessed everybody throughout that two-hour drive from here to Las Vegas. Every car I saw was from a different state, I, you know, different travels. There were people in there with little kids. I blessed them for, you know, a quiet trip. <laughs> well, that's what I would want. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, and it was, I'm not kidding, by the time I got to Fran's house, I was flying high. I was so high, I couldn't hardly stand it. It just felt so good inside of me to keep my mind stayed on these positive aspects and blessing these things. So I started um, uh, this idea, um, I, I, like I said, I do Facebook a lot and I do some of the memes and things that are posted on Facebook. And so one of the things that I've been posting every day at, uh, at 1.11, because I like the 1.11s, one at 111 in the afternoon I post what I can call in a blessing extravaganza. And each day is a different blessing for a different area of our, of our world. So I, um, I think I had some quotes in here before this to show you the blessing. So this is what it looks like. This was the first one from August 1st. Blessed are those who wish from the bottom of their hearts in total sincerity the very best for all people, for their complete fulfillment and deepest happiness in all aspects of their life. Could you imagine if you said that to each person? You, now, even if you said it in your mind, to each person you greet, that I wish you from the deepest depths of my heart in total sincerity that you have everything that you ever need, that you are joyful, that you are filled, that your life today, at least today, unfolds easily. Imagine how you're going to feel when you're doing that each and every day. This idea of this blessing, as I said, it, it takes those ideas of gratitude and forgiveness, which we've worked with in this past year already, and, and it just takes them to, the, it up-levels them to that next, that next evolution of what these practices can do to actually transform our lives. So in his book, um, this is what he, Pierre uh, Pradovan says, I'll get it to come back up. To bless, it means to wish unconditionally and from the deepest chamber of your heart, unrestricted good for others and events. It means to hollow, or hollow, I'm sorry, not hollow, hollow, make it holy. To hold in reverence, to behold in with awe that which is always a gift from the Creator. He goes on to say, to bless is to evoke the divine care upon, to speak or think gratefully for, to confer happiness upon, although we ourselves are never the bestower. It's the Father within that doeth the work. We're speaking the words, but we are never the bestower but simply with the joyful witnesses of life's abundance through the gentle art of blessing. It's really becoming a powerful practice in my life. I'm really, I can't wait to see what unfolds through it. You know, we've, we started off that, my first month here in November um, with a gratitude practice, doing a 30-day gratitude challenge. 
We have done the 21 day no complaining challenge to see how that works. What can happen in our lives if we actually begin to implement a blessing every day? A blessing to any, anybody, any situation. And, and, and as I said, these are done silently. I'm not speaking them out loud. It's done within my own consciousness. And of course, we know in Science of Mind that that activates something in this universal consciousness that can only help but bring good into our lives and to the lives of the people that we bless. I think this is our world work here. This is our work that we can do to transform. It's okay to translate spirituality into our own lives. That's a great starting place. But what can we do to transform our lives and the lives of everyone else around us, to actually transform our world? I believe the momentum of it is starting with our faith leaders that are coming forward, making such bold statements. In all of my life, I've never seen statements like this being put forth about anybody in power. And they're coming, they're coming up now for a reason. They're coming up to be healed. The violence in our country is coming up to be healed. You know, and we are the ones who, by doing this work in consciousness, can be a beneficial presence. Because every single thing takes place within our own consciousness. I can't wish for somebody else to change and me stay the same. It just doesn't work that way. So what do I do to change myself, to become a blessing to everyone I encounter in every single moment of the day is transformational spirituality. You know, the word spirituality comes from the Latin word spiritus, which means breath. Where is our breath? It's within us. All of our spirituality is within us. And in order to transform our lives and our world around us, we have to do that inner work. And this is a darn fun one. Like I said, I was flying high in joy and, and enthusiasm for all of that that was coming out. My mind was kept on positive. My mind was seeking the best for others. And by seeking the best for others, I know that I bring the best for myself into my own life. That's the way it works. All right, let's take this into prayer. So our form of prayer, for those of you that may not be familiar with it, is called affirmative prayer. It is one of our primary spiritual practices. It has five steps. First step, I recognize the presence of God, spirit, universe, whatever you want to call it. And the second step, I recognize that that presence is within me and within everyone else. And the third step, I state affirmations of the truth. The fourth step goes back to our, our practice of the month, gratitude. And the last step is let me go, release. So if you would, join with me. If you're comfortable, go ahead and close your eyes. Take in a nice deep breath. As we turn within to that place in consciousness, I feel it in my heart center, right in the midst of my chest. And I feel it surrounding me. And I know that it fills this space and is the very life I am living. For nothing exists outside of this one, this one divine power and presence, this one universal creator, this one that I call God. Because I know that God is all there is, I know that God is that infinite beauty, harmony, and peace that is flowing throughout life right here and right now. I know that God is that creative intelligence that has brought forth everything into existence through unconditional love, through perfection and wholeness. And because I know there is only one, I know that I am one with it. I know that all that I am rests in the heart of God. I know that my life is God's life right here and right now. My life is one of beauty and harmony and peace and ease. I was created in unconditional love, and that is what is flowing forth from me. And as I know this is true for me, I know this is true for each person present here today, each person within the sound of my voice, each person that has ever been and is yet to be 
but nothing exists outside of the heart of God. And so in complete realization of this power and presence manifested as all life, I speak my word. I know that right here and right now, this life is a life of blessings. It is a life filled with that unconditional love, that perfection, that harmony that is moving forth through me, through each person here, as a blessing and a benediction to each person in grief. There is nothing exists outside of this oneness. And so when every encounter, every time we meet anyone, we see anyone, we have any encounter with anyone else, it is simply God meeting God. For nothing exists outside of it. And it can be nothing else. And so I keep that idea fresh in my mind. And it shifts the way I look at everything. It shifts the way that I deal with each person I encounter. It shifts the way I drive my car. It shifts the way I buy my groceries. God meeting God in perfection and wholeness and unconditional love. I am so grateful to know this. I'm so grateful to feel this power and presence. I'm so grateful to see it active in my life and in the lives of everyone else. And so I simply release this word into the law, into that creative mind that always says yes. I let it go, and I let it be. And so it is. And so it is. We have a song to cement that.
that time in our service when we enter into another spiritual practice we call conscious giving. Uh, we have um, a text to give phone number here if you want to. You just text that number and you say give, and it'll take you right to the directions. It's all a secured site. We like that. And then we also have an online um, way that you can contribute to if you'd like to. And so as you are preparing your gift, if you would, um, first off, that we have some envelopes in the back of the seat. If you want to have this uh, counted as a tax-deductible contribution, we need your first name and last name. I got a whole list of people um, uh, on Wednesday, Thursday from our accountant who said, who are these people? <laughs> so if you, want to, if you wanted to contribute, you know, add it to your uh, tax contribution, please make sure you put your first name and last name on there so that we can read it. Um, Wait, hold it near your heart and give it a silent blessing, whatever way you choose to. And if you would, read this with me, please. With an open heart and an open mind, I give and receive freely and generously. I know the universe responds to me in time, and my beloved community is richly blessed. By my conscious hearing. And so it is. We have another song here. We're going to sing that while we're passing the baskets. <laughs> All right, just a few announcements here. We do have the um, uh, Gentle Art of Blessing available in the bookstore here if you are interested in picking that up. I've ordered a couple of these. They're not in yet, but um, we'll get those soon. Uh, here's the other book, the 365 Blessings. Um, we have an opportunity to um, support a wonderful local charity. This is... Um, Youth Futures, which um, is a home for um, children who um, eight, 12 to 18 who don't have any parents there, can't be in a shelter by themselves, and so this is a shelter for the children here in St. George. And so we're um, picking a collection of school supplies for them. You know, as a former teacher, um, I, you know, there's something that happens inside me back to school time. Um, and schools, you know, back to school sales, that is like the yeah. best thing ever, you know? So I'm just saying, um, yeah. So anyway, um, pretty much any kind of school supplies that is what they can use. I know they, need, they will need backpacks also. I'm not sure. Oh, I did put backpacks up there. 
Um, you know, if you want to get a backpack and put some stuff in it, that would be wonderful. If you want to just bring some stuff, that'd be great too. We have a bin in the lobby there for that, and so uh, they are great, graciously receiving uh, what we have to offer for them. They start school next Monday. Yes. Tomorrow. 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 That's well. I guess that is next Monday. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was a question that I was going to ask. Yeah, yes. Well, there won't be the no, the building won't be open tomorrow, but we'll get them to them this week. Or we're open on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Okay, so, so we can get yeah. them on Wednesday during the day. Yeah, Wednesday um, from one to yeah, from one to five we're open. So, um, and it might be a week or two before we get that over there. They'll still need. They'll still need them. Okay, yeah. So, so we just started this. If okay, you could do something yeah. wonderful, yeah. 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 yeah, we just started it um last week, so no, we were just asked to do it. It's um, the first of its kind in St. George. It's Right, yeah, this this is a fabulous organization, so. Yeah, it's 25 years. Could you tell us where it is? I don't know. Is it Switch Point? No, it's no. not Switch Point. It's, called, it's, it's Youth Futures. It's, it's on Actually, Purse it's one of those things that they don't release the information. Well, okay. we'll, well, well, we have people here who know, and I don't remember It's who on it First South. First South. And okay. around 400 East, between okay. 400 and, eight, and 300 East on First South. Okay. Um, they do have a website. And I'm not, like I said, we've had people take the stuff from here there. I mean, they've been working with them, so. And I know somebody volunteered, I don't remember who it is, to take I'm that stuff over. Like You're helping, Sue's helping, there we go, thank you, Sue. Um, so they'll be taking over. Kelly? Um, I, partially, I feel like I'm being a little paranoid saying this, and partially it's like they're screaming at me. So I know that when I was volunteering at a women's shelter in Las Vegas, they were very careful about keeping their address quiet. So, uh, because of all sorts of reasons, if if somebody found the link, I still get there. It, mm -hmm. it, so, try to keep the address yeah. more quiet than less quiet. Um, like I said, I think the information is all on the website about how to contact them and so forth. So I don't really know. So, and what if it that's is. the case, yes. then that's not a valid conversation. Mm -hmm. Right. And, yeah. And I know a lot of And I think it's contact, like, you know, call somebody and they'll tell you, you know, make arrangements. Anyway, I don't, I don't really know. But I do know it's one of those, one of those places where we do have to keep some confidentiality for the people that are uh, residents there. Okay, so uh, we have a concert coming up at the end of August. I understand they're fabulous. I, I wasn't here last year when they were, or the past when they were here. It wasn't last year, it was maybe a couple years ago. Uh, they're doing a New Thought musical variety show. It's supposed to have comedy different instruments. They are uh, Native American flautist that play the flute. Um, and they're also then going to do a workshop on playing the Native American flute. And they have all the flutes that you can use for part of the workshop, plus they have them that you can buy. So Friday, August 23rd at 7, Saturday, August 24th at 10.30. I think it's a three hour workshop, I believe. Is it here? Yes, it'll be right here. Um, I probably should have a sign up sheet, but I don't have that yet. Next it's week. a love offering. Love offering, that's right. It's on a love offering basis. So, Okay, um, and our bookstore, as I said, we have um, the book of the month there. We also have the New Science of Mind magazine uh, with absolutely my most favorite place in the world on the front of it. So we're heading there in, what is it now, Fran? Nine days? Nine days from going to the Silomar for a week. Um, so anyway, the magazine's available and all kinds of goodies in there. Sue has done a wonderful job putting things together for us. Um, after service, Kelly is available for prayer. Um, the prayer room is right here in the corner where it says meditation and prayer room. If you're interested in getting a personal prayer with her, she'll be happy to do that. And then we have coffee and goodies available if you would like to partake. I know there's, let's see, how does it go? The messy stuff's in here and the drier stuff's in there. <laughs> it's half and half now today, okay. <laughs> Some messy in there, because you know it's tile in there, it's carpet in here. So yeah, yeah. So enjoy yourself after service. So we're gonna um, sing a song, and then we'll do our closing affirmation. This is again our beloved Cheryl Barlow. So if you'd like to stand, that would be great. We love this song. It's a new day, today it's a new life. My way, the doubts there are no.
it's a new day. Today it's a new life. My way. Thank you. 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 Thank you.